Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will solve a couple of geometrical problems. Now, this problem presented as part of the course called Mass Plus and Problems. It's part of the Unizor.com website. On the same website there is a prerequisite course called uh, Mass for Teens. Um, there are physics for teens, there is a relativity for all courses, etc. So everything is totally free, there are no advertisements, no strings attached, you don't even have to sign in uh, unless you are uh, studying under somebody's supervision. And then we just needed to establish the sign in to establish the connection between you and the supervisor, teacher or parent or somebody. But otherwise, if you just do it yourself, you don't have to sign in. Um, now, um, this, this course, Mass Plus and Problems, um, it's dedicated to um, uh, development of your creativity, your analytical thinking, um, just to force your brain to start working outside of the box. So that's the purpose. The prerequisite course called Mass for Teens is a classical uh, some, it, it's, a, it's a classic course of, ma of mathematics for, um, uh, for high school, maybe a little bit above that, but generally speaking it's for high school, uh, and uh, it presents the theoretical material. There are some problems there as well, just to illustrate the theory, the theorems, the proofs, etc. Now, these problems are totally different. They are not related to any particular um, part of the theoretical course, just to illustrate it. No, you have to really come up with something first, something creative, and then it will actually lead you to using some kind of um, theorems or uh, definitions or whatever you have learned from the theoretical course. So this is to think about, basically. And every problem which I present uh, I have it as a lecture, it's on the website, and uh, on the same website, uh, together with the lecture on the same screen, you have a notes, uh, and notes are like a textbook. It's exactly the same thing, sometimes with a proof, sometimes without proof, if I have the proof uh, during the lecture. But it's very important for you, instead of just listening to whatever I'm saying or reading the, whatever the proof is in, in, the, in the notes for the lecture, it's very, it's very important for you just to um, read the conditions, whatever the problem is about, and try to solve it yourself. This is the most important part, and I repeat it in every lecture which I have. Try first to solve the problem yourself, and then watch the lecture or read the, the notes if there is a, uh, the, the proof or solution or, or whatever. Okay, now, being as it may, let's, uh, let, let's start with the problem. So the first problem, I do remember this problem given to me when I was probably in, 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 in high school, very, very long time ago. And I don't remember I was ever uh, solving this problem, I just know that it existed. Now, um, for this lecture, I just decided to solve it, and, uh, well, it was not easy, basically, that's, what, uh, that's all I'm saying. But nevertheless, whenever you are, uh, whenever you have already come up with a solution, it's kind of easy to explain, but it's, it's not easy to really make something like a first step towards the solution. Okay, so, here it is. Ah, I need a very large triangle. Okay, something like this. Okay. And uh, Okay. <coughs> okay, so this is a BC triangle. It's uh, isosceles, so sides are equal, and this is 20 degree. So that's what's given about this triangle. Now, this line is at 60 
degree. This line at 60 degree to this. Now, this is at 50 degree. And what we do know to find out is this angle. So again, isosceles, 20 degree, 60 from this line to base, and 50 degree from uh, this line to base. Well, they intercept the opposite sides at points D and E, and you have to find the angle A, D, E. Okay. And again, to tell you the truth, I did not know how to approach it. And, uh, well, first what I did, okay, let's start from calculating. Okay, if this is 20, uh, how much this total angle? This one. Well, we subtract 20 from 180 degrees, which is sum of all uh, angles. That's um, uh, 160. Now, these angles are equal. So this one is 80 and this one is 80. Right? Okay, that's what I just started with. That's normal, right? Okay, now, if this is done, then I put some other angles as well, whatever is needed. Um, some, for, for example, uh, how can I calculate this angle, for example? A, D, C. Well, I have 60 here and 80 here. That's what, 140? So this one would be 40 degree. I don't know if I need it or not, but I just put it in. Well, anyway, so let's just continue. What is this angle? So this one is 40. What is this one? Well, this is 80. This is 50. So it's 130. From 180 remains to be 50. Oops. Now, this is very important. Whenever I hit this particular angle, and I'm just talking about how I was thinking, it immediately obvious that since this is 50 and this is 50, E C A is 50 and C A C E A is 50 which means that these two sides are equal to each other okay that's fine then I decided to draw a parallel line here and connect it with this so this would be 60 as well And let's call this point O. So, these are two symmetrical lines at 60 degrees. Now, why is it 60? If this is parallel and this is connected and this is 60, so this is obviously to... to I don't want to spend time to prove that uh, if this is parallel line, then and, and, and this is 60, then this is 60 as well, because these are... Uh, uh, isosceles triangle, etc. Six, uh, 80 degree on both sides. That, that's obvious. So, we'll skip the easy part. Now, let's just think a little bit more. If this is 60 and this is 60, O, 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 C, A is 60 and O, A, C is 60 degrees. Then, this is an equilateral tri tri triangle. A, A, O, C is equilateral, which means that this one is equal to O, C and equal to O, A. But now look at this. E, A was equal to A, C because these are two 50 degrees angles. Now, A, O is equal to A, C because this is equilateral triangle. Which means these two, this one and this one, are equal to each other. 
which means that these angles are also equal to each other. Now this one is what? If this is 80 minus 60, this is 20, right? And since these are equal to each other, because AE and AO are of the same length and equal to AC, then this is supposed to be what? If this is 20 and this is again a isosceles triangle, that would be 80 and 80. So this one would be 80 and this one would be 80. All right, that's good. Now, <coughs> we know that this one angle, which is basically vertical to this one, is 60. So now we can determine this one, if we want to, right? 80 and 60, that's 40. 60 and 80 is 140 minus the whole angle 180, it will remain 40. Okay, that's great. Now, what is this one? This is 60, this is 80, this is 60, this is 80, 140, this is also 40. So these two lines, this one, EO and EF, are also equal to each other because these angles are 40. And now, you see, what actually prompt me is that this EFDO, EFDO, looks like a kite. You see, these are perpendicular to each other, at least on my, on my drawing. That actually prompted me to consider this thing. So I just consider this particular shape and look at this. Um, FD and DO and FO actually are all the same because they are all uh, sides of equilateral triangle. Remember? 60 and 60, so this is 60 and 60, everything is 60 degrees, so this is equilateral triangle. So this is equal to this. Now, ED is a common line between these two triangles. This one, EFD and EOD. So side is equal to side. This side is common. And now these are 40 degrees and 40 degrees, so these two are the same. So we have these two triangles, EFD and EOD, equal to each other by three sides. Which means this is, these are two equal angles. Now, the total angle is 60, half of this is 30. And that's what's necessary to determine. A, D, E is 30 degrees. Okay, so, what's, in, what's important here? First important is you draw this parallel line and uh, connect it with, with this C. So you will have this equilateral triangle and this equilateral triangle. That's easy. How I came up with this, I don't know. Now, after that, when I draw all this thing, what prompted me is, if you have an exact drawing that I was trying to do as, as, as exact as possible, it actually um, was kind of suspicious that it looks like a perpendicular and it looks like a kite. And then I started to prove it. And uh, basically, I, I put all the angles, whatever I could, uh, and then, again, all of a sudden, I had this 50 and this 50, and then this 40 and this 40. So these are kind of steps um, which, which I took by proving this type of thing. Sometimes you can just, you know, have a good guess what exactly you have to draw in addition to whatever is given to, to make some, some, some reason and, and, and uh, some way to prove whatever is necessary. Sometimes it takes time, and that's, that's very, very important. You have to take time if you have a problem and you don't know how to solve it. And I'm talking about problems you don't know how to solve. Uh, you have to think yourself, you have to come up with a solution. Because again, more, um, I would say, typical way 
um, somebody in school will just give you some theoretical material and uh, even the problems they're saying okay this is a recipe how to solve a square uh, the quadratic equation for example um, okay these are the steps this is the formula use it so you know how to solve the problem and you just using already written for you algorithms you are using the recipe which has already been given to you and it does not require the brain power this requires the brain power and that's exactly the purpose why I'm putting all these problems for you just to force you to think about out of, uh, 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 outside of the box nobody gives you the solution you have to come up with a solution yourself with algorithm with recipe with step-by-step -step instruction how can I do it okay second problem second problem is as follows so you have two triangles two triangles now we have to prove their equality well by the way whenever I'm saying equal in geometry it's kind of more customary right now to say congruent and uh, basically it's the same thing and if I'm just using one instead of another uh, it, I, I mean I mean the same it means basically the two different figures if they are congruent they can be actually somehow um, move uh, in such a way that they will completely um, uh, they were completely be the same uh, the same the same figure or whatever it is sometimes it's just movement sometimes you have to turn it around and then you have to put them together one on the top of another sometimes you have to turn it around or like reflect it and then and then they can actually be the same so in all these cases uh, sometimes we are saying that they are congruent sometimes uh, I, I used to say equal, but that's basically the same thing. It, it assumes certain process after which they coincide completely. Because, for example, if you have this triangle and this triangle, they need reflection first to coincide. But they are equal because all three sides are equal. So that's just different kind of movement um, which, which you have to, different transformations. And all these transformations are supposed to be um, uh, legitimate. So you have to like move it, you have to turn it, and you have to reflect it. And if under, if under these circumstances you can make them to coincide with, with, with each other, they are called congruent or, or, or equal. Uh, okay, so what's, it, what's known about these things? Well, known that the base of one is equal to the base of another. Well, means congruent, whatever. Um, also, we have an angle on the top. So it's angle A1, C1, B1 equals to angle a2, uh, C2, B2. So the base and the angle on the top. And bisectors. C1, X1 equals to C2, X2, where X and X1 and X2 are intersections between this is bisector. This is x1, a1, b1, c1. Okay, so bases are the same, angles on the top are the same, and the uh, top angle bisectors are the same. We have to prove that these are equal, congruent triangles. Now, so what I will do. I will assume that C, 
I, I would just uh, put A1 and A2 at the same point, B2, B1 and B2 at the same point, and C1 and C2, let's assume they are different. Let's say this is something like this. This would be my second triangle. And it has certain bisector. That would be X2. C2. So here are my two triangles, which are not coinciding right now, but that's how they will probably be uh, positioned on the plane if I will uh, put the bases on the top of each other. So the bases are supposed to be the same because they are, by definition, of the same length. But let's assume that the uh, vertex C1 is not the same as C2, and that's why we have different um, intersections of two different bisectors with, uh, with the base. So this would be A1 and 2, and this is B1 and B2. Okay, now, let me put it here, X2. Now, what do I do next? Okay, here is, again, some kind of additional, um, uh, additional uh, construction which I did which helped basically to do whatever I'm going to do. My first point was, if these angles are the same, then if I will inscribe one of those triangles into a circle, since these angles are the same, this one and this one, point C2 is supposed to belong to a circle uh, circumscribed around uh, the first triangle. Why? Well, because I hope you remember this theorem. I will remind it you right now, um, because I will use it. So if you have uh, a circle, then angle which is inscribed, which is two chords which one side coincides, this angle is measured half of the central angle which is uh, subtended the same by the same arc. So this is twice as much as this. Or this is half of the central angle. Or sometimes I can say that the, it, this angle is measured by half of this arc. Means actually half of the central angle which is uh, subtended by this arc. Now, if you have two chords which are intersect, how about this angle? Well, this angle is measured by half of the sum of this and this. Well, more precisely, if you have two central angles, this one and this angle, so sum of these central angles divided by two. That's what, that's what I mean. It's measured by half of the sum of these two arcs. And finally, if you have an outside angle, it's measured by half of the difference between these two. So half of the difference between these two central angles. So this is a known fact, and I presented in the theoretical course Mass for Teens, which is a prerequisite for this one. And I'm going to use it. So if this point, C2, doesn't belong to a circle, it should be either inside or inside, or, or outside. If it's inside, it would be let's say here, it would be half of this arc plus half of something else, right? Now this one is only half of this, because it's inscribed into a circle. But these are supposed to be equal, so we cannot add anything. Or if it's outside, we cannot subtract anything from half of this uh, central angle. So that's why it's supposed to be, be, be uh, supposed to belong. Now, what's interesting is, let's put it here. Now, this is bisector. So this is supposed to divide this in half. This is bisector. Cx, 
this is CX1, not CX2. So CX1 is a bisector. So whenever it goes to this point, it's supposed to divide it by, by 2, right? Since it's a bisector, it's supposed to divide the arc in two halves. That's why they are intersecting at the same point, P. Okay? Now, now we consider this triangle. P, C1, C2. Okay. First, uh, let's take a look at this angle. Uh, C2, C1, P. Now, it's inscribed, so it's supposed to be half of this arc. Well, means half of the central angle, which is subtended by this arc, right? So half of this arc. So this angle is equal to one half of C2, B2, P. C2, B, P, P, right? Now, how about this angle? And how about this angle? First, let's consider this one. This is C2, X2, B2. It's equal to half of uh, this one, half of CB2 plus half of A. A1P. Remember, I was just telling half of the arcs which are which are supported by, by uh, support by, by uh, support this angle. Okay. Now, how about C1, C2, P? This way, this angle. Well, it's this arc. Right, so it's equal to one half of C one A one P. C one A one P, right? Uh, and how about uh, which one? This angle. Uh, which is C. 1, x1, a1. This angle is half of this arc, c1, a1, plus, uh, plus this one, p, b, 2. Okay, so basically we have expressions. Now, this arc and this arc, these are equal to each other, right? So, Consider this angle, th th this little triangle. This angle was equal to this, and it's a vertical to this one. Now this angle was angle uh, was this angle was uh, um, compared to, to to this one. It was equal to this one, but it's vertical to this. So it looks like this angle in the big triangle is equal to this one equal to this, and this equal to that. So basically, what I'm saying is C1 angle C1. C2, P, was equal to this, X2, X1, P. And angle C2, C1, P, was equal to opposite, X1, uh, X2, 
P. Which means what? Which means that these two triangles are similar. We have two angles of this equals to two angles uh, of this. Now, it's not parallel. I'm not saying this parallel because it's a uh, is basically crossover from this angle to this and from this angle to that. So this angle was equal to this and this to this. That's why it's a, a cross. Now, if they are similar to each other, and we know that these pieces C1x1 and C2x2 are equal to each other, from this very easily follows that these two pieces are also supposed to be equal to each other. Because we, we, we have the proportionality of the, uh, uh, of the sides, right? Again, that's very easy to prove. Let's call this little thing x1, this little thing x2. Uh, and these two pieces, uh, let's say D and D, because the bisectors are supposed to be the same, right? So, <coughs> what is proportionality? Well, uh, D plus X1 divided by X1 is supposed to be uh, divided by X2. The proportional it's supposed to be equal to d plus x2 divided by, by x1, right? That's proportionality. d plus x1 is supposed to be proportional to this, as this is supposed to be proportional to this, because the angles are on the cro crossing each other, right? From which follows d x1 plus x1 squared is equal to d x2 plus x2 squared. Uh, from this we do d x1 minus x2. We put this here and this there is equal to x2 square minus x1 square, which is x1 minus x1, x2 minus x1, x2 plus x1. Now, obviously x1 and x2 are supposed to be equal to each other, because if they are not, uh, If, if x2, uh, one second, x1 minus x2, and, two, uh, and, and here x2 minus x1, because if they are not e equal to each other, you see the opposite signs. If that means d would be equal to minus x1 plus x2. If they are not equal to each other, I mean, if they are not equal to zero, if x1 not equal to x2, which means their difference not equal to zero, we can basically um, cancel it uh, with reverse sign, it would be minus, and that's impossible. So they are supposed to be equal to each other. So if these two are equal and these are proportional, then these two must be, must be equal as well. And this is equilateral triangle, and this is equilateral triangle. Now, from the fact that this is equilateral triangle, this PC1C2 follows what? Well, the fact that this is equilateral triangle means that these two triangles uh, are, are basically symmetrical relative to this diameter line. And that's very easy to prove. I, I actually don't even want to prove it because it's kind, kind of obvious. Um, since, uh, since, it's, uh, since these two angles are equal and these two equals as well, you basically have this. the whole angles are equal to each other, which means that these sides are equal to each other. I mean, it's really kind of easy to prove. I don't want to, to, to spend time on trivial proof which basically means that these are exactly the same. Since these angles are equal, the arcs are, in, uh, are, are equal, these two are equal, okay, I have already proved it. And that means that these two arcs are equal, which means that the sides are equal, the chords basically are equal. That's, that's it. 
um, again, it requires certain, uh, I would say, creativity. Um, the first kind of creative piece is whenever you are um, circumscribe the triangle with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with a circle and basically kind of an easy proof that C2 belongs to the same circle as well because it cannot go either uh, uh, outside or inside the circle because that would be a change of the angle. If angles are the same and they are the same by definition uh, you see, the, the top angles are the same by definition so it must be on the circle. Then the second point was that if you will continue these two bisectors, they will uh, go into the same point. Um, again, I you, you have to actually uh, kind of remember this for the future because basically if you have any, any circle and you have equal angles, let's say these two angles, bisectors will always go into the same point because they have to divide this arc in two equal parts. Any other uh, any other angle which is supported by the same by the same arc would have bisectors. So all the bisectors will go into the same point. It's a fact which we have just you know proven it during the proof of, proof of this of this problem and everything is fine. Okay, after that, what was really another kind of revelation that these two triangles, C1, C2, and P, and X1, X2, and P, are similar to each other because I was using this theorem about the angle uh, inside, angle between two chords intersecting inside, that this is supposed to be half of the sum. Well, after that, everything else was really kind of easy. Well, again, the more problems you solve, the more um, uh, different approaches you will accumulate in your brain, and it will be easier to do it next time. Okay, that's it for today. I do suggest you to read notes for this lecture. They are more accurate, and the, the, uh, the drawings are maybe a little better. And uh, basically, that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>